We greet you all with the peace of the Lord. Standing, we're gonna we're gonna open our Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-seven. We're going to read the verse 15 and verse 21st and 22nd. Matthew 27, 15, 21, 22. The word of God says as follows. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. Verse 21st, the governor answered to them, which of the, of the two do you want me to release? They say, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. Lord, we glorify you. We are grateful. And we ask you that you can bless your people, your church, with your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The Bible says, By the feast, by the moment of the feast, So the Passover celebration was about a life of slavery to the life of freedom. People were slaves in Egypt and they were delivered from that slavery through the hands of Moses servant of the Almighty God. At the night of the exit from Egypt to start the path towards the Promised Land, the, the land that will produce honey and milk, a lamb should be killed and from the blood of that lamb, they should apply to the doors, doorposts. And every house that the blood will be applied to the doorposts, a family of the servant of the God of Israel will be there, eating and celebrating. And wherever there is no sign of the blood in the doorposts, the word says that it will be death. Wherever there was blood, it will be life. Wherever there is no blood, it will be death. So that will be the passage. That's why the name of the feast passed over from death to, li to life. The life of slavery to a life of freedom. A life of suffering to a life of joy, peace, consolation. And the Bible says that this was celebrated for centuries until now, even from the Christians and also from the Orthodox, Orthodox Jews. So the Bible talks about this option, this choice that God allowed them to, to make for the ones that used to be slaves. And the word says, by the occasion of this feast, they have a habit, it was a tradition. Pontius Pilate, they invaded and conquered Israel. So now govern upon Israel. 
Bible says that every year during this celebration it was common to let one of the prisoners go out free someone that was condemned in a death row and it was common to present two candidates let's say me and Antonio was there we arrested because we did some crime crime so we criminals by the occasion of the Passover they present for example me and Antonio and the people the crowd will choose which one should be set free and the other one will be death back then they have a famous criminal named Barabbas and the book of Mark he was very known for several crimes with another rebel Tim and he also was arrested due to a homicide so he was presented to the people his name a killer and the Savior before the people there was the blessing and the curse the light and darkness the the heaven and hell and the word says they will put before the crowd for them to decide and the Bible says that they chose ba Barabbas and the name Barabbas means so Bar means son and Baras father or Abba father so his name literally means the son of the father he was a rebel he was someone that will move someone against the governor and he, he was put it before the people also the the person of Jesus and Jesus also is the son of man as the Bible says son of the father God father so as Jesus talked to this disciple his disciples as he was praying he say Abba father everything is possible to you in the New Testament in the book of Romans chapter 15 says Romans 8 15 as for you didn't receive the spirit of slavery to be once again in fear but you have received the spirit of adoption of children which we claim Abba Father Galatians says chapter 4 5 and 6 to redeem the ones under the law in order to receive the adoption of children as you are children and God have sent to your heart the spirit of his son that claims Abba father so before the people there was a man represents representing the king of this world and the other one representing a kingdom that is not from this world one that promises to the people and that's why the people chose a kingdom for this life and Jesus was promising a kingdom that was not for this world the word says that Jesus call us to be kings and priesthoods but not for this world but the people want something for this world so then it was presented 
these two candidates of two kingdoms, one for this world and one for the eternal life. One for this kingdom and the other one, as Jesus says, my kingdom is not for this world. I will all go for the Father to prepare places to live. Interesting that normally every year it was like that. It, it was a custom to present to criminal, to homicide, to thief or someone that has a crime. But that year it was different. That moment the people had a choice. When we go back to the Old Testament and we talk about David, he committed a, a sin against God and God sent an angel and 70,000 of the people of Israel died. And even though the ire of God, the anger of God didn't go away. So when David noticed that 70,000 people died because of his fault, he entered in anguish, anguishing. And he said, it's not fair. 70,000 people died because of my sin. And in that day, he understood something. It's not righteous of an innocent to die for a sinner. And many times, we do not have that perception that David has back then. To understand that it's not right to have an innocent dying for a guilty. And God allow that to show to David that mystery and to reveal to us that is not righteous, is not fair. An innocent die for someone that has committed a sin. But the Word of God says, and death entered through man and for the sin of death and also it was spread to all the humanity. That's why the whole human have sinned and all taken away from heaven. And the, the price is death, but the gift, the free gift from eternal life is Jesus, the innocent to substitute the, the criminal. A savior dies in replacement of the sinner. As back then, a lamb or a ship used to be sacrificed to save a family of sinners, Jesus also dies to give a salvation because we were all under a sentence of death because of the sin. Until that day, there was no options for the people. It's always two criminals, two bad people, two sinners. But now they were before a criminal, a sinner, and the Savior. And Pilate's makes this question, which one do you want me to spare? Who will die today? Who will live today? Who should be set free? And people back then chose Barabbas. And in our days, if we ask to the world, 
to the population of the world. Because back then, it was the whole population. They chose, there is a, a quote, the voice of people is the voice of God. In Latin, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. But back then, it was not the voice of God. People were choosing Barabbas, Barabbas. But that, that was not the good choice. That was not the plan of God. That was not what God expected from them to choose. But that day, that, that's what happened. Let go on Barabbas. Let go to Barabbas. It's a moment of choice, brethren, in which you and I, we have a choice and Christ, between Christ and Barabbas, between life and death, blessing and curse. It was before the people, the one that is the way, the truth and life. Recently, I, I noticed someone arguing about that. So why way, truth, and life, not the opposite? The order. And if you ask, what is true? Because Pilate asked that to Jesus. He didn't know what true was. And the, the word says, if you know the truth, the truth sets you free. And Pilate was very confused because he didn't know the truth. And how many people are very confused because they don't know the truth? And they live a life of illusion, lie, a lifestyle very distant from what God has planned to offer. And why that order, way, true, and life? Because if you're not in the way, you're not going to face the true. And there is no true out of the way. That's why Jesus is the way, the true, and the life. So back on that day, there, there was that option. They have that option to choose. Those two choices between the Savior and the sinner. And the question was the one that I'm going to repeat. Who do you want me to let go? And the crowd answered in one voice, Barabbas. So Jesus was condemned and crucified. An innocent instead of the criminal. So God allowed that to happen. When Jesus was at the, cro the cross, he says something. And he says, Teterestai, from Greek means, it's all finished. The price is paid. So the Lord showed tonight through a dream that when we left the church, we had uh, in towards the eternity and a vehicle approached to conduct us to that place and the people ask is this, is this ride free and the conductor says no it's not free nothing is free but a price was paid already for my life, for your life, for our lives. It was paid at the cross at Calvary to give you this opportunity to be able to participate in this kingdom that He has prepared for us even before the foundation of this world. So the people that enter that vehicle understand that. Interesting that when the the driver mentioned that he mentioned the place where the 
the price was paid, where this was paid. And uh, the instructor says the price was paid at the courthouse. Why at the courthouse? To be registered. So when Jesus went to Calvary, he left a report, like a document, sealed of the death. You are free from your evil, from your sin. Your sin is being, uh, are being forgive, forgiven. The death was paid. The, an innocent paid for me, sinner. And as David testified, this is not fair. But the righteousness of God exceeds our understanding. David felt embarrassed with that. He was touched by that. There was a text in the Bible that a answers, asked the question, aren't you feel ashamed, brethren, when we understand the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross, we feel embarrassed, we feel shame because of the magnitude of the price that was paid for our salvation. Then, between Christ and Barabbas, who do you want to let go free? Now that we are washed by the blood of Jesus, now that Christ has died and resurrected, now that he reigns upon our lives, and he has made a promise to save us. Now that he say to each and every one of us, there will be an eternal inhabitants for you all in heaven. Now we have a choice. And we can say we want Christ. No more Barabbas. Barabbas needs to die. As for that day, one needs to leave and the other one will be killed. And that's why Paul says, I do not leave myself, but Christ lives in me. Barabbas needs to die so Christ can reign and live among us to have freedom. So there will be a conflict back then between the kingdom of this world and the eternal kingdom. And until now, we still live in the conflict between these kingdoms. But the desire of God the Father is that we make the choice now. Now that we understand the sacrifice of Jesus, the price paid for our salvation, now we can say, let Christ set free. Because when Christ is free, he brings us peace, joy, relief. He's the bread of life. He's the water of life. He's the light of God. He is the grace, he is the favor, the mercy of God. He is the consolation, the refreshment. And Barabbas, what is it? Destruction, curse, disease, sin, and death. So before each and every one of us, it's a personal choice. And we cannot let anything influence our decision. The multitude back then, they were under an influence. They were convinced. Tell Barabbas. Tell Barabbas. And in our days it's not different. God is saying something, but the enemy of our souls are saying something different. So we are being influenced or try to be influenced by the voice of the world. Since the beginning it was that. God approached to Adam and Eve and said, you can eat everything, but not this one. But at the moment, they, they suffered an influence on, uh, from the devil. And they made the bad choice. So the death came and was transferred to the whole human being. But now we have a choice to make a good choice. To accept Jesus as our only Savior and sufficient Savior, and understand and value the 
price paid on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins, the salvation of our souls. And we cannot let people or world or religion to interfere in our fellowship with God, our relationship with Him. As for the final hours, we need to present ourselves before God and we cannot blame anybody. We cannot transfer that guilt to anybody. You have the decision. You are the one that's going to make the decision. They made a bad choice. They chose Barabbas. So curse and, and death came upon them. And the Bible says, choose life so you can live in your descendants. Since the beginning, when the people walking through the desert, heading to the promised land, the Lord pro showed to them two mountains, a mountain of blessings and the mount of curse, Jerusalem and Ebal. So God told them, choose life so you can live. So in our days, the world also is presenting two choices. The religion also is presenting his choice. And you have the choice. You have the option. You're free. You have the free of speech, free will. You can express your uh, desire. Who you want to be set free? Who you want to be set free? Who's going to govern? Who's going to reign upon your life? In your life, in my, uh, my life, my household, Christ or uh, Barabbas? Who are going to guide us and conduct us? Christ or Bar Barabbas? And now we have that option to choose Christ, to, to choose life. And the Word talks about that. Behold, there is no condemnation for the ones that is in Christ, in Christ Jesus, that delivered me from sin and death, and through the sin, he condemned the sin in our flesh. So this is what Jesus did for our lives. And God proved his love for the humanity, letting Christ, his Son, only begotten Son, to die on the cross to give us the salvation. We need to value and understand this great love of God for our lives. And He loved the world so much that sent His only begotten Son, Abba, Father, the Son of the beloved Father, so everyone that believed in Him will not perish but have the eternal life. Amen?
the time of Jesus, the criminals has like a report. There was a document of a death. So when Jesus died at the Calvary, he uses an expression, teterestai, which in Greek uh, means it's all finished. This is what God showed for tonight's service. You need to leave here understanding that you can be without a death because the blood of Jesus has forgiven us for, for, and our debt is paid off. As for Jesus, he has done everything, giving his blood at the Calvary, at the cross, to give us salvation. The Lord showed a woman coming, dressed as a princess of a fairy tale. So what, what princess means? The daughter of the king. But she was not a princess. But she wanted to show that she was. She was not the daughter of the king, but she was trying to show that dressing as uh, a princess. As the fairy tale princess. And in the vision, we could see that she was suffering, crying, and anguished. Because all the plans, all her plans, was frustrated. Nothing turned real. Nothing came true. But tonight, it was offered to her. Another vest. So she needed to remove the fairy tale dress and put the vest that was offered to her. It's a new vest that there is a, a song that God has for us, a vest of praise instead of sadness, oil of joy instead of tr sadness. This is what God has for your life. Salvation through Jesus Christ. Salvation through the moment that you choose Christ instead of Barabbas. There was a moment for you to choose life instead of death. You change a life of illusion for a life, the whole life, true life in Jesus Christ. So when she accepts that vest, the Lord told her, my daughter, now you are being adopted for a real king. We are children of adoption. We are adopted to be prince, uh, pricehood, and prophets and kings. There is a text in the Bible. I made a note here. Let me find So to this woman was offered this vest that, that signify a vest of salvation and she was adopted by God which is the king. Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. In the book of John talks about the ones that didn't born through the flesh but from God. So starting today you are born in Christ. And whoever is in Christ is a new creature. Everything is new. When we adopted, we receive an inheritance. So tonight you are receiving this inheritance. It's heaven. A place in heaven. Amen. Let's stand. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Lord, we bless your holy name for your voice, for your great love. We praise you that you have sustained us with your strong hands.
We bless you for the second come of your son Jesus. We are waiting for that moment. There will be a day of, a day of joy. We adore you. We bless you. One day we'll be forever with you. One day we'll, we were blind spiritually, but now your salvation has reached us. Blessed be your name for your great love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, we glorify you. Blessed be your name for your salvation. You have been merciful upon our lives. You have loved us. You have blessed us. You have loved us. And we understand the signification of the crucifixion and the death of your son at the cross, the, the meaning of the your son surrendering himself in the cross. And now we have an option to choose you as our Savior, our King, our Lord. And we give you all freedom to guide us and to protect us us in our families and we praise you for Barabbas' death and Christ is alive forevermore blessed be your holy name for this place in heaven in eternity you have prepared for us for the salvation for your zeal, for your care for your love for ourselves we pray in Jesus name Amen. In your name we say may the wonderful grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of Father God the and the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit and the love of God can be upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. The church, uh, the service is finished. And you that is watching us through YouTube or Zoom, we say to you, it is a pleasure to have you with us. The next Saturday we're going to have starting at 1 p.m. here in the United States, a special seminar through YouTube transmitted by satellite. You can spread the, the invitation for the, one, for the ones that follow us through the media. If you need an assistance, there is a group of deacons and workers to pray with you. Wherever you are, we can pray with you. And here, presentially, we're going to be at the disposal of whoever needs. Next Thursday, we'll have a presential service, Saturday and Sunday. Thursday at 8 p.m., Saturday and Sunday at 7.30. And Sunday morning, we have the Sunday school teaching through YouTube. To you all, peace of the Lord.